What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to the Submechanophobia preview. So, today we got the first preview for Submechanophobia. I haven't seen anything about the book in, in at all. So, uh, this is going to be exciting. The cover has changed like four times, but I do think this is the better cover. Uh, it looks amazing. So, I'm excited to get into what story we will be reading today. I believe it will be Submechanophobia. Uh, but we do have, as well, the three uh, names for the for the stories in the book. We have Semicanophobia, Animatronic Apocalypse, which is... wow. Uh, and Bobby Dots Part 1, of course, Bobby Dots Conclusion is the name of the fifth book. So this is a Part 1 and 2, like we all thought, which is very, very cool. I love that concept. So, let's get straight into this. <clears throat> Semicanophobia, Grand Reopening. Freddy's Fantasy Water Park is now open. Buy one ticket, get the second half off. Family's welcome. That's weird. We've never had this sort of thing. Huh. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, kid. You're not supposed to be here. Bam, bam. Don't hit the glass, please. Caden West... Oh, my gosh. What is that name? Wachowski. Wachowski. Yeah. Caden Wachowski called from a few feet away beside the main centre of attraction, what the owner called Freddy's Sea Life Mech Aquarium. Mech Aquarium, what? It was the only place in Freddy's Fantasy Water Park that held underwater animatronics. Caden had marvelled when he first saw the large swimming mechanical underwater creatures. A sea dragon, two sea serpents, a few sharks, assorted fish, a mermaid, and a vintage scuba diver. The tank also displayed a full... Uh, undersea scene with coral plants and seashells. The little kid must have snuck through the maintenance section to see the animatronics up close. Guests were only allowed to see the meca. This is so difficult to say. Mecoarium. 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 Aquarium. Mecoarium. Mecoarium. From the outdoor attractions. Why won't the dragon look at me? The kid whined. Look at me, dragon! The little guy wore red swim trunks, a yellow fant uh, Freddy's Fantasy Water Park t-shirt, and flip-flops, and likely had wandered off from his chaperone. Because the dragon's not real, kid. It's an animatronic. Now go back to your family. They're probably wondering where you are. This place sucks! The kid slapped the gr glass again. Hey! Caden stalked toward him. That's enough. The kid spat out his chewing gum on the glass and spun around and shot Caden straight in the chest with a clear plastic water handgun, twice, stopping Caden in his tracks, then ran off toward the doorway that he wasn't supposed to enter in the first place. Caden sighed, wiped a hand down his wet work polo, and watched the big wad of pink gum slowly slide down the tank's glass. He took out a rag from his pocket, leaned down, and wiped off the wad. Then he huffed air on the glass and tried to clean the surface the best he could. Hey there, Wachowski. How's it going? Caden quickly straightened when he heard Martin Copper's voice. Martin was the owner of Freddy's Fantasy Water Park and his new boss. Caden gave a nod, clearing his throat. <clears throat> Good, Mr. Copper. Um, Martin smiled and waved a dismissive hand in the air as he made his way to him. Call me boss, will ya? Caden tried not to stare at his wide grin. Um, sure, boss. Martin Copper was an on uh, Martin Copper was an ordinary middle-aged man of average height and build with thinning salt and pepper hair. The only eye-catching trait about him was his smile, which he'd apparently sent uh, spent a lot of money on. His teeth were large, bright ivory, and capped straight to perfection. When he grinned, it was hard to ignore those pearly whites. Walk with me, Murkowski, Martin commanded and Caden strolled with him along the narrow pathway along the, around the circular tank. The sea serpents, one faded purple and the other pale pink, slid by Martin as he walked by, their snake-like bodies writhing beside the glass. Roy, his co-worker, had nicknamed them Marco and Polo because they often hid in obscure spots in the tank. That's hilarious. They can be kind of creepy sometimes, eh? Martin said. Caden nodded with a forced smile, looking away from the animatronics toward the surrounding water park. The crowd was sparse for a Friday, but they just reopened a week ago. The water park was structured like a giant wheel around the aquarium. 
To the north was a main entrance and the park's office. To the west were Bonnie's sea ponds. Oh my god, sea bonnies. <laughs> with two kiddie pools and the main diving pool. To the south was Freddy's treasures and eatery. Uh, and the pier to get on Chica's ferry boats. Oh, that sounds adorable, to be honest. To the east were Foxy's island water slides and tucked in between the clear tubed water slides and game area were the employee lounge and maintenance workshop. I actually want to go here. Like, this sounds amazing. You have sold me. Chica's ferry boats flowed along the small stream that separated the water attractions from their aquarium. At the moment, the, the boats were filled with a few kids who were squirming to get as close to the animatronics as possible. Caden knew that Martin discouraged this. The animatronics were pretty worn down with chipped paint, rusted spots and a few broken pieces that you couldn't really notice unless you were up close. The water park had been popular years ago, but had been closed for years until Freddy's uh, Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex opened two towns over. Okay, wait, 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 wait. The water park had been popular years ago, but had been closed for years until Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex opened two towns over. So two towns over from this water park is Freddy's Mega Pizza Plex. I don't think this is in Freddy's Mega Pizza Plex. I believe it is two towns over. So hopefully we can get a location. For, uh, for where this is, <laughs> and then we'll be able to figure out uh, where Mega Pizzaplex is. Martin was hoping to coast off the success of the Pizzaplex, but he hadn't put any money into renovating the place. It was Caden's job to try to keep the prized attractions up and running, which was turning out to be harder than he had anticipated. Managing the aquarium was the only job with decent wages he could manage in Meadowbrook without some extra schooling. Where's Meadowbrook? That's my question. Um, school hadn't been a pleasant experience for him and he'd always learned best by working with his hands. Martin sniffed and pulled at his nose. I told, uh, sorry, I know I told you already, but I need the tank kept clean, Wachowski, spotless. Martin talked with his hands. When he was making a point, he'd stab the air or slice in front of him as if wielding an ax. Caden wondered if he knew how intense he seemed. This aquarium. <laughs> is the bread and butter of the whole park. I need it to have a big comeback. He bared his teeth, or barred his teeth, and pointed to a copper-coloured tooth on the side of his mouth. I gotta pay off this dental work. Real copper, you get it? Caden nodded. Nice. Um, yeah. Miss Boss, I check the water chemical levels every night and make sure everything's running smoothly along with the other pools. Good, good. And when an animatronic breaks, you gotta fix it right away. No messing around. When the attraction is closed, the people don't come, and I lose money. And if I lose money, no jobs for anyone. Get it? Caden nodded at the finger pointed in his face. Understood. I'll fix it right away, boss. I hired you because of, of your mechanics background stuff. You took those shop classes in high school, right? Yep. Took the hands-on mechanic courses, and I had that summer job where I worked on the mini animatronics at Penguin Pizzeria. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm good with fixing things, my grams always said so. Caden glanced into the tank, scanning the swimming animatronics, and scratched his head. He realised he couldn't see the mermaid. Uh oh. As if Martin had read his thoughts, he stopped walking and stared into the tank. Wait a darn minute, the mermaid? Where's the mermaid? He leaned his flat forehead against the tank's thick glass and looked down. Caden followed his gaze. There, at the bottom of the aqu aquarium, laying on a rock, was the mermaid. Her arms were crooked. Her eyes were wide open with one socket, pitch black as one eyeball was missing. Her mouth was agape as if she had drowned. The mermaid's down, I repeat, Wachowski, the mermaid is down. Martin shook his head, rubbing a hand on the back of his neck. Shut it down and get her fixed, gosh darn it. Then Martin stormed off in a tizzy, waving his hands around in the air. The more times I close it, the more money I lose, he muttered. Get her fixed, Wachowski. Sure, boss, Caden spoke quietly. Not a problem, right away. Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. This is setting up what the story is going to be. Him fixing the mermaid. I can do this. Caden quietly muttered to himself as he climbed up the ladder to the enclosed platform that surrounded the top of the aquarium. I am fearless. His grams always told him that using positive affirmations could help him get through tough situations. It had helped while growing up, but he was discovering the words to be in inadequate for his new job. I am brave. 
He looked across the park and spotted Roy, closing down Chica's ferry boats and offering free coupons to visitors who play games. Caden reached for the wetsuit hanging on a hook and realised his hand was shaking. He curled his, fit, his hand into a fist and opened it, then grabbed the wetsuit used for diving into the aquarium. He licked his dry lips and tried to get his breathing under control as he felt his air starting to thin. He shut his eyes and shook his head. I can breathe fine, I can do this. He stripped down to his swim trunks and pulled on the snug suit and zipped it up. I'm not a little kid anymore. He was 19 and on his own, with Graham's bills piling up. She raised him since he was six and it was his responsibility to take care of her house while she stayed in the nursing home. It was the last thing she told him when she was taken away in the ambulance for accidentally hurting herself after an episode of early onset Alzheimer's. It was important to let her to uh, it was important to her to keep her home and he wasn't about to let her down. He needed this job, so he needed to be able to do the job. He walked over to the aquarium controls and shifted the power lever. The hum of electricity clicked off. Then he pushed the button to pull back the blue tarp across the top of the tank. He heard the slow hum as the mechanical cover retreated. The strong chemicals in the water floated up into the air. Caden slipped his feet into the diving fins, hefted on the uh, air, heavy air tank, hooked his tool pouch to the carabiner car on his suit, and slipped the goggles onto his head. He gazed down into the water and saw the shadows of the unmoving animatronics floating below him. A tremor radiated down his back. His feet felt heavy, as if they were glued to the platform. He lifted his legs one at a time to get them moving, then rolled his stiff shoulders. Whenever he shut down the animatronics' power, the sea creatures stopped in different areas of the aquarium. Some were floating at the top, some in the middle, and others sank to the flow sea floor. This would be only his second time inside the tank. The first time, he ducked under the water and swam above the animatronics, too scared to get close to them. He wasn't all that sure he could go further down to the bottom, but this time he had to. He had to. Hopefully this was just a motor issue. The main operating system of the motors was simple, just a bit of wiring and a reset button that could be pressed in the tank. If anything was seriously wrong, the animatronic would have to be hauled out to be fixed. He was pretty sure Martin would flip out if another animatronic needed to be removed from the tank though. Caden sat down on the edge of the platform, slipping his fins into the water. I can do this, everything will be fine. Please let everything be fine. He pulled his goggles down over his eyes, put the breathing regulator into his mouth, and before he could stop himself, slid into the cold water. The chill of the water hit him first as he sunk straight down. Right in front of the face of a shark's wide open mouth with huge sharp rusted teeth. Caden's eyes widened as a wave of panic slammed into him. His heart hit against his chest and he momentarily forgot where he was. All he saw was the terrifying mechanical shark and black oblivion waiting down its throat. He waved his arms erratically, trying to get away. He whirled and slammed into the vintage scuba diver, tangling with its arms. It was grabbing him, holding him. Ah! His mouth opened with a scream, releasing the breathing regulator. Water gushed down his throat. He shoved up toward the surface, burst through the water, scrambling to the edge and pulled himself out of the tank. He rolled over onto the side, choking out water and gagging. His chest felt like it was going to burst open and his body shook with tremors. He ripped off his goggles and took a moment to control his breathing as the blur of terror slowly faded away. Water dripped into his eyes and he blinked. He suddenly realised where he was and what he was doing. He was, at the, he was at his job at the Fantasy Water Park. He was diving into the aquarium to fix the mermaid. There was nothing that could hurt him in the aquarium. He was safe. Oh man, he muttered to himself as he closed his eyes. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Even when he was younger, or ever since he was younger, sorry, Caden suffered from submechanophobia, the fear of machines while underwater. So, why are you working at the water park? <laughs> That's my question. Like, surely surely this would have been disclosed as you got your job or whatever. Like, I, I have submechanophobia, by the way. I can't really go underwater. I, I'm terrified of it. Uh, well, there's machines on the water. Why would I? Why would? Why would you get a job there? <laughs> anyway, uh, after Caden's parents were lost at sea during a second honeymoon, Caden had entered therapy. When he went to live with Grams and went back to school, everything seemed fine for a time. 
He was making his way back into a normal life until the one fated day that he he referred to as the second grade field trip gone totally wrong. It turned out his parents' death had left him with an unshakable fear of underwater machines. He didn't even know for certain what had happened to his parents, but his brain had just decided that underwater mechanics were involved, and that fear had never gone away. After the field trip incident, he was teased for the rest of his school years, no matter how well he did on the field, or how nice or how quiet he was. His classmates had never forgotten, and they, in turn, never let him forget. For years, Caden wanted to leave, to run away, but he just couldn't leave Grams. So he'd stuck it out, and he'd found ways to cope. Maybe he had even hoped, wished, dreamed that one day his parents might come home to him. And he was still terrified, and he didn't understand why. During his episodes, it was as if all common sense was ripped out of him, and he became this pile of fear and helplessness. His therapist, Dr. Marx, thought he possibly had imagined his parents' plight so vividly that it had caused the phobia, but Dr. Marx had also said it was just a clinical guess. Just a guess. It was hard to cure something when you had no idea what it stemmed from in the first place, though therapy hadn't given him the, answer the answers he needed. It had taught him a few techniques to endure his phobia. He'd learned to avoid the fear. Avoidance wasn't always the best way to solve the problem, he knew, but it was the only thing that had helped. That was why he loved the building and fixing things. When he dug into a project, it distracted him from the harder times in his life. Caden sat on the edge of the platform until he calmed down, slowly breathing in and out. He plotted out a pathway to the mermaid at the other side of the tank that would allow him to avoid all the other mechanical sea creatures. That would be his clear path in and out. With a plan in place, Caden forced back his fear and slipped into the water before he could change his mind. He spotted the huge green sea dragon a few feet away as he sank. It was the largest of the animatronics with scary metal spikes down its back and tail. Caden's pulse fluttered as he dived down straight for the mermaid. His adrenaline spiked and he wanted to rush, to hurry and to get out and away from the animatronics. Stay calm, he taught himself. Hold steady. Diving wasn't meant to be done fast. He had to pace his breathing and regulate pressure and try to clear his mind. Strangely, whenever he went underwater, an odd static noise filled his head. You would think it would be silent under the water, but it seemed that the white noise was just another thing he didn't understand about his phobia. It's because he's a robot. <laughs> As he swam further down, you could feel his gut tighten. He eyed the long-tailed sea serpent, Marco, staring at him from a few feet away. The animatronic was powered down, but the eerie way the sea serpent stared directly at him made Caden feel like he was being stalked. Watched. For a second, he thought he noticed a flicker of yellow light in his eyes. The power is off, he reminded himself as he finally reached the mermaid, whose eyes he thankfully could not see. The unsealed, uh, sorry, he, un he unsealed the compartment panel on the mermaid's back and tightened a loose wire. He flicked the button to reset the machine and, his, and her arms suddenly waved around. Caden flinched, hitting the aquarium glass with his air tank. The panic came clawing back. When the mermaid settled back down, he forced the anxiety away and moved again. He gazed at the tank wall, making sure he hadn't damaged it. He closed up the mermaid, slid the screwdriver into his pouch, and swam as fast as he could to the surface. He swam as if someone was right behind him, ready to chomp his fins with sharp metal teeth. He couldn't shake the feeling that the sea dragon was watching his every move. Caden yanked himself up on the platform, pulled off all his equipment, and hurried to the power level, uh, dripping water onto the platform. Come on, work! He pulled the lever up to power on and turned to look at the tank. The animatronic's eyes lit up and slowly they began to swim around the aquarium. Caden gazed down at the mermaid as she swam at the bottom, moving her arms and tail around. Her faded red hair waved through the water. His shoulders sagged with relief. I did it. He scrubbed a hand down his face and through his wet hair. Then he stripped down to his swim trunks, dried off, and started to organise his uh, diving equipment. Martin hadn't told him how to care for anything, but Caden had always been a stickler for a clean shop and work environment. He'd researched how to take care of diving equipment and the proper ways to use it. Every tool, every piece of equipment had a designated place so he knew where it was when he needed it. He always refilled the air tank no matter how full it was. He wiped down the goggles and hung the fins and tool pouch on a section on the wall. He set the breathing regulator in a clean box. When he was dressed and everything was set to rights, he left, he left to let Eva, the 
office manager know that he that the Macquarium and Fairy Bots were back in business. Score one for Wachowski. However, with how exhausted he felt, it didn't seem like much of a win at all. This is a long preview. Hey Caden. Caden swiveled around to see his co-worker Roy walking towards him. Nearly a decade and a half older than Caden, Roy always looked like he had just rolled out of bed with dark hair that always stuck up in crazy directions. His uniform was usually too small and wrinkled. You wouldn't know it by his appearance. Alright, that is it. Interesting, I like the setup. I like the setup a lot. Uh, obviously, the animatronics are going to haunt him or something. I don't know. There's a weird static noise going on when he's under the water. Maybe that's to do with the robots being under the water. That's a cool connection. We also need to figure out where that place was. So, like, where this is. Uh, it said... Hmm. Where was it? Where, where was it? Eh. Eh, eh, eh. Meadowbrook. I don't know where Meadowbrook is, but if you guys know where Meadowbrook is, tell me in the comments below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.